So here I am in the dashboard and I'm gonna to go to my apps and then I'm gonna go all the way over here and we've got e-learning and then we've got new e-learning. So what we're gonna to do today is we're go going into the new e-learning because that's the one that's new. <laughs> Okay, and then I also got two more, two more courses that are live on my other platform, and I, and I just submitted the one on the laws of attraction yes. for uh, review, and that's the one that's live on, on this e-learning. Fabulous. But I like yeah, the way it links to Cheetah. Good, 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 good. That is fabulous. Very exciting, you guys. And you guys are going to be just as excited when you get your courses up. Um, and I challenge you when you get your courses up, find uh, you know two or three or four people that you're willing to give them access so they can get in there and review your course. So you can get some testimonials, some reviews, and then you can get a website up with those testimonials or reviews so you can sell your course. So that's a, a small price to pay to get somebody to get you some reviews. So um, here we are in the e-learning course. And I've got this course right here that I built. This was for when I did the training modules. And uh, it's called Using Facebook Groups to Grow Your Email List. And if I want to do anything with that particular course, I can actually click the first little icon, which allows me to edit the course. I can click the second little icon that allows me to get the embed code or it allows me to get a direct link. So if I click that, I can get the direct link right here. That's just a regular old, plain old, ordinary URL that you can give to somebody. Or I can get the iframe embed code. And to use this, we have to go into Cheetah and grab the iframe element and then copy this code into the iframe element. So that's two ways that you can get people to arrive at your website. Um, the third one is course data. So as you're uh, collecting data on this, uh, the people that are attending the course and if they're taking uh, tests or if they're uh, sending the instructor messages, you can actually click this and it opens up and it shows you all your inbox messages. It shows you all of your students that are registered and uh, if they've taken any tests, whether it's a lesson test or the final test, it will show in here so you can see the results. So that's another really neat thing that we have is the, the data, the course data. And then there's some triple dots here. If you click that, you can go to duplicate. So if you get a course that you really like the design of what you've done, you can actually duplicate that course and then put different content in. Um, you can transfer a course. This is great because Bridget might call me up and say, Shelly, I really like that course that you made. Can I have a copy of that? And I can get Bridget's email and actually transfer that to her and then she can work with that course and either add to it or take away from it or make it better like only Bridget can do. Um, but the transfer is really a neat function. And then we've got delete. So if you're tired of the course, it's old, you don't need it anymore. You can just click delete and it is gone. So those are all the things that you can do from this screen. But we're going to go ahead and create a brand spanking new course and we're just going to kind of play in it a little bit. So I'm going to click create new course and I'm going to come up with a name. So let's say Shelly's tick tock training well that's just easy to say in it and the instructor name is shelly builder all diva sure. and the category we've already got categories in here that are added by default so you can choose one of these categories or you can actually go over to this side and add a category on the fly so i'm going to click add category and i'm going to type in tick tock and then okay so now the category of this training is actually tick tock then i'm going to click next and I'm going to do a lookup for the icon of this particular course. So I'm going to click on it and I'll go into my graphics right here and we'll see if we can find, I'm just going to find a Shelly picture. So I'll go to the S's and there's Shelly right there. So I'm going to grab that and click open. And then I'm going to click next. And now it says create new course. So I've put in my basic information. I've done the image and now I'm ready to click create new course. And what it's going to do is create the entire kind of skeleton of the course in the background. And now it gives me a way to start putting in more information about the course. So right here, I've got my image that I chose. I've got the name. And now I can start putting in a description of the course. So I'm just going to type in a little bit of information. So learn how to use TikTok to grow with followers and rabid fans. Then use your influencer status to promote Builderall. Get leads, get new people on your team, and have loads of fun. There we go. So um, I've got some text in there. Now I've got the ability to uh, change that text a little bit based on this dynamic toolbar. So in that description, I can bold, italicize, underline, strike through, all those standard things that you get on a dynamic toolbar. So I can kind of change things around. I can list things. Um, there's a lot of neat things I can do in the description. 
And this description right here is what's going to appear on the home page of the course if you don't choose to show something else. We'll, we'll show you in a few minutes how you can actually change it so that this description doesn't show. But right now, I'm, I'm treating it like this description is going to be on the home page of my course. Okay. Then I've got the category of TikTok. If I don't like that category, I can change it by clicking the down arrow or adding a new one. Translation is English. If you want to edit the translation and put it into another language, there's actually not that many areas that have um, titles for things in the e-learning. So you can click the edit translations and actually create your own translation, whatever language you want to do. So that's actually a really cool feature of the e-learning is that you have the ability to edit the translation. So here, the workload, how long is this course going to take to complete? And I'll say that we'll do a three hour course on TikTok. Actually, it could be a 15 minute course because TikTok's really easy. Um, then I have allow ask questions to the instructor. So I can turn by default, this is on. So I can leave it on. And what that does is it allows the uh, students to ask me a question or anybody that's coming into the um, course can actually go into the comments area and ask me a question. Um, and then I can click the uh, check mark box that says send questions to this email. So I check mark it and then put my email in and all of those questions will go straight to my email as well. So I can have uh, the ability to let them ask questions before they buy or before they choose to enroll. The next one is show search bar. This only works if registration is not required. And I want you to think about this a minute. There's a lot of these things in here like this. But if you think about it, it makes sense. For a search bar to work, we cannot have protected pages because it's got to be able to search the pages. So if you have a, a, a course that registration is required, meaning the pages are protected until you log in, then the search won't work. So that makes sense that the search bar is only going to work if registration is not required. So for me, probably most of my courses are going to be registration required. So I will have this turned off. They won't be able to search. Okay, so that's the first section. I want to show you one more thing, and that is right up here where it says general. There's a uh, tick box right here, a tick toggle switch, the toggle switch. That's what it is. And uh, it's by default toggled on. And that means that your course is active, as in they can go to the URL or they can look at the embed in a website and your course will show up. It will be live. If you tick this off, so you toggle it in the off position, nobody's going to be able to find your course because it is now hidden and the URL and the embed link won't work. So if you're wanting to do some work and you want to hide it from everybody, of course, you need to tell them first because <laughs> they may panic. But uh, you can actually turn your course completely off so they can't get to it. And then you can do all your edits and then turn it back on when you're ready for everybody to get in. Or you can actually create a course and say this course will run for the fir first 15 days of every month. And you can set it to run from the first to the 15th and on the 16th, click it and it will no longer be available. And then you can hold off and then activate it again on the first of the next month. So you can see how powerful this tick box is right here because you can turn off your course access and then turn back on your course access, okay? So very important. So once you've done everything in that category, the next category is instructor. So when I click that, it actually uh, allows you to pull in an image of the instructor. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up an image of myself because I am definitely loving myself today, just a thing. So here we go. We'll pull that one. Oh, let's do, I'll we'll do that one. There we go. There's me again. And uh, my name right here. And then my expertise, this is where you can put information about your instructor, like any degrees, any certifications, anything like that. So I have, I have a few of them. So I'm going to go N, I'm going to go A plus, I'm going to go MCP, MCSA, MCSE, CCNA, BSIT, MBA, and EDD, ET. Yes, those are all my degrees. That is crazy. So if you guys find a degree that has a Z in it, let me know because that's what I need to get. So anyway, um, you can see that that's going to be valuable because that just kind of shares information about your instructor, gives them authority, um, and uh, uh, presents to the potential student that this person knows what they're doing. Okay. The next one is registration and protection. And this is a little tricky, so stick with me on this one. So right here, uh, we have a choice of registration not required. So what that means is they do not have to put in a username, password, or register to be able to see the content. The next one is registration required to view the content, which means they have to sign up with a username and password to be able to get in. And then the next one is some lessons require registration, meaning you can give them some lessons for free, and then other lessons, they have to have a username and password to be able to see it. So that's actually really cool. I love that feature. Because now you're going to be able to send them to a course and say, I will give you the first two lessons for free. And you can see if you like it. And then if you like it, you can buy the rest of the course. 
right? So it's almost like a, a lead magnet that you're giving them. So that's a really, really cool feature. So I'm gonna set this as registration not required so we can go and test some things and not have to register. So this one says, if registration is required, non-registered users will be able to, um, will only be able to see the, uh, or, sorry, let me try this again. If registration is required, non-registered users will be able to see only the course description, okay? So if they're not registered and registration is required, then the only thing that not registered people will be able to see is the course description. So right here, we've got another tick box. And by default, this is toggled off and this is closed registration. And what this means is that anybody that's coming to the course from the URL or from a web page iframe, they're not going to be able to register. You, you can't register on the fly if course registration is closed. But they still will be able to register through checkout once checkout set up. So once checkout is set up and actually linked to release a course, um, they'll still be able to register if they pay. They just can't register on the fly to get in if you uh, tick this box as on. Okay. Um, the next one is custom registration URL. And this is a field that you fill in if you're going to sell your course through checkout. So um, what this means is when you go into checkout and set up your product, it gives you a URL for the button to be able to purchase the product. So you put that URL right here. And what that, what that also means is if they come to your course and then they try to register, it's going to say, nope, you can't, you can't just register, you got to buy. And it will redirect them to where they can buy, okay? And then the protection settings, um, this is allowed domain. And this is a field that you uh, fill in only uh, if you want the uh, e-learning course open in a specific domain, if you have it in an iframe. So we've talked before um, about the being able to iframe e-learning in one of your websites. And people that, I'm gonna look at your eyeballs for this one, because it's a little bit hard to explain. But uh, people that are savvy with the internet kind of know how to get around things so that they can find out what the URL is of that particular course if you iframe it, okay? So even if you have it iframed and you have it in a protected membership area, the e-learning course is not necessarily protected. It's the page that it's iframed into. So if they go and look at the source information, they can see the URL, direct URL of the course, and they can bypass that and get right into the course. Not everybody can do that, but it is a thing that you can do. So what they're working on is setting it up so that when you iframe it into a website and you have it with a specific domain, you can say, don't open this course if this domain is not involved. So that way it locks it down to that domain. So it only opens when you're using that domain. So that's a, another neat feature that they've got. So if you try to iframe it and then send them to a protected membership area, and if, if that membership area is protected so they can't get in without a username and password, and it has a specific domain, you can say, don't open this e-learning unless they um, are connected to this domain. Okay, so it's a very, very um, interesting way to do it. They're still working on it. It's not perfected. I just got a message from the developers that it's not completely protected, um, but they are working on it to make that part work really well for you so that there's just no way they're going to be able to get into that e-learning course unless they have a username and password or they have, they have permission to get into a membership area of a specific domain. Okay, does anybody have any questions about that? It's probably clear as mud, right? Um, I, I don't have a question, but uh, today I tried exactly what you said and it, it's not working right now. Right, that's right. Um, so that's right. I, the, developers, yeah, the developers do know that and they messaged me today and they said that is exactly how it's supposed to work, but they're still working on locking it down because there's still a way for people to do exactly like what I was saying, where they can just go into the um, source code and actually find the iframe and go in there anyway. So they're still working but, on locking it down according to domain. But actually mine was all were locked down. So I put the, the my, my name, my domain name, and it was locked down. So I took it off and then I could I could see it. So it's working in a way. <laughs> good, good, good. Yeah, but there's still, I think there's still an issue with the source code. So um, they're still trying to figure out how to, if you take that URL that's inside the source code and go outside of the domain, and then go directly to that URL of where the page is instead of being iframed in the membership area, it's not protected. So they're still working on making sure if you sneak it, or if you sneak into it, you still can't get in. So that's what they're working on and that should be fixed really soon, hopefully, okay? Um, Shelly, I think I noticed where if they go to the course, it still says register or log in. Yeah, if, they go to yeah, if, you, if you set it for register or log in, you have to register or log in, that's very true. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right, um, so let's keep going through everything, guys. So that's the registration and protection area. And again, that allowed domain, it is working, but um, not working. Let's call it that. It'll, it'll restrict according to the domain that you put in, but there's still a way that people can get in and sneak uh, a free website, a free course from you. So they're still working on locking it down completely. All right, so um, modules and lessons. Uh, let's go through that in a little bit. I wanna keep going through everything and then we'll go specifically through modules and lessons together. So FAQs, frequently asked questions. Every time I say FAQs, I don't know about you guys, but it so sounds like I'm trying to say a dirty word. Um, but anyway, FAQs are frequently asked questions and you can turn those on or off. Now by default, they're on. And if you toggle the switch, they will be off and you can toggle it again and they will be back on. But all this is, is uh, questions that are, that are usually commonly asked about your course that you can put in there to help answer any questions that they might have about your course. So these are things like, um, what do I need to know to be able to take your course? Uh, what do I need to have to be able to take your course? A computer, uh, do I need to buy a textbook? Do I need to buy an ebook to follow along? You know, those types of things. So um, you can put all those questions in there so that you're trying to answer them before they make the decision to come on into the course. Then the final test and certificate. This is actually fabulous. You can set it up so that before they can finish the uh, e-learning course, they have to pass a final test. That means everything that they just learned, you're gonna test them over all of it. And the result score can be one of two things. It can be a percentage of the right answers. So that's usually very commonly used, right? You got 95% right, you got 45% wrong. Um, so you, we are testing on the right answers. So if you make a 95%, that's usually a pass. Uh, or you could choose uh, by values among the right answers. So this one's a really interesting one and uh, it's a challenge if you haven't used it before, but you can give each question on your test a value. It can have a value of one because it wasn't a very hard question, or you can give it a value of four because it was a hard question, right? So every time you get one of those questions right, you get the number of points that are assigned to that question. And to be able to pass the test, you need to have accumulated a certain number of points by getting questions correct. So you may have to have uh, 60 points to pass, which means any number of questions that you got right you accumulate those points and they have to be at least 60 points for you to be able to pass the test, okay? So you can do it either way. My favorite, of course, because I'm a high school biology teacher, I don't like to think too hard. Um, it's actually a percentage of the right answers. That's my favorite method. And then the pass percentage, um, usually this pass percentage is somewhere around 65 to 70%. And this only works when registration is required. Now let me explain why, because again, this is one of those that you're like, what? But if you think about it, it makes sense. In order to track the uh, percentage and make sure that they've taken this test, they've taken that test, and now they're taking the final test, in order to track all that by student, we need to have them registered. If they're not registered, we can't track them and we cannot give them a score. So it makes sense that this only works when registration in the course is required. And then there's questions right here. So I can add a question as I click it. And uh, there's three different types of questions. There's the short answer, which is like a, a paragraph type answer. Then you've got true or false or yes or no, and then multiple choice. So you can choose any one of those three question types. And then you type in the question text um, and then the answer, you can give them a tip. So for example, um, the question might be something like, what color is the sky? Question mark. And you can put the answer is blue. And then the tip is it starts with a B and ends with blue. And then the question value, and if you remember, we talked about that a few minutes ago, some questions are very easy. So you might give them a value of one. Some questions are very hard. So you might give them a value of four, five, 10, whatever you want. And uh, so you put the number value there and then you click add question. Question chip. Can you mix up the types of questions can, or do they all yeah, have to yeah. be the same style? Nope. If I click add question again, I can now do a true false and put my question there, click the correct answer, give them a tip, give them a value, and then click add question. So you can mix up the questions all throughout the, the test. And is it case yeah. sensitive? Um, that I don't know. That I, I don't know. I usually do short answer and I, at the end of each a module that I've got a question for them so that they can reinforce what they've learned during that module. Good, now I'm, I haven't seen yet, and this is a question that I still have to answer for myself. 
the short answer uh, questions typically have to have eyes on the, the answer to be able to give it the score. So I don't know if the instructor can go in and actually um, give, give the correct number of points for the answer. That's one I still have to test. Um, but you can imagine if you ask a paragraph type question, there's a lot of opportunity to um, get an answer right or wrong. Um, and usually when I would ask a, a paragraph type question, I would be looking for things, very specific things in the answer. So if they had three out of the four things I was looking for, I might give them three out of four points for that question. So um, I still well, haven't looked at the- The way I do it is I just want to yeah. use it to reinforce what they, what the, that module was about. So it was for them to go back and make sure they understood it and how they could take what they learned and apply it to the, you know, like the laws of attraction. How are you going to apply it using meditation or doing a to-do list or doing a gratitude journal? Right. And remember though that right here, what we're doing is the final test. So this is the final test before they get their certificate. So you want proof that they are they're knowledgeable about the entire course, not just one module or one lesson. Okay. Yeah, but it, it, what it is is it's an accumulated thing. That's exactly right. So then the next setting is the certificate setting, and this is like the cherry on top. I love this because we can actually choose the certificate, and we've got several different colors we can choose from. So we've got kind of a blue, gray, green, purpley, red, and yellow. Of course, I love the blue, so that's what I'm going to choose. And what's cool about the certificate is that once you uh, complete the course and you get a passing score and you get your certificate, it, it tells you um, it puts your name on there and then it puts your passing percentage, and uh, and then it gives you a QR code. And that QR code is actually a score verifier. So you can actually scan that QR code and it will take you to a website that actually verifies that that's the score that you made to be able to pass that, that class. So I thought that was really neat that we have a verification tool right on our certificates, which is really cool. All right, so any of these questions that you create like this one right here, I can go in and edit at any time. And if I just don't like it, I can delete it as well. So lots of power right here, just in the final test and certificate area. Then I've got the lookup area. And this is interesting because this is where you start getting to decide what you want your course to look like. So the first one is the theme. And I can click this green button that says open course with the theme editor. And that's gonna open up my course. And let me move my little bar over here. So hopefully I can see better. And what we have is on the right hand side, we have default settings for what we want our course to look like for our students. Now, the student will have the ability, we can allow them the ability to change this if they want to. But for me, I want to set a default setting with the way I want it to look. So I can go down here and I can change some of the color themes from uh, blue to pink to yellow, whatever I want for the theme. Then the layout style, there's actually four different layout styles. There's three vertical layouts and one horizontal layout. I think I'll stick with vertical one. Then there's the layout width, so it can go full screen or I can close it into a box screen. Then the navigation bar, um, I can choose to hide it on the side, so make it really small, or I can open it up. How did you and get to I that page? In. Sorry, Davida. How did you get to that page? Um, uh, right here, this green button under things. Oh, oh, the green button? Mm-hmm. Um, I can also uh, position that navigation bar. Right now it's on the left. I can say, nope, I would like it on the right, please. Or I can move it back to the left. There's actually a couple different styles. So style one or style two. So lots of different ways that you can create a default look to your course. Um, we also have the ability to change the primary background. So I can go from uh, gray to black to you know, whatever I want. Um, so then secondary background, there we go. You can see how it's changing. So you can play with that a little bit. Um, I can change the toolbar, so I can position it above, so right there, or I can position it below, or below fixed, and I actually like it below static. I can customize the background color, so if I check mark that, I can now start changing the background color, which I'm going to not customize. And, uh, and then the custom scroll bars, I can enable by default or disable, um, and these are the scroll bars that show inside your course to scroll up and down um, on your course pages. So once I configure all of those defaults to the way I want the course to look like, um, then I can actually just close that window. And I now have my theme edited the way I want to. But there's a button right below that that says allow students to edit the theme. I can, that it is actually on by default. And what that does is it allows the student to do exactly what I just did. And they can change the whole book of their own layout. You can also turn it off and it has to stay exactly the way you, you put it. 
So you can give them the choice to edit their theme or you can take it away and make it stay exactly like what you made it be. You can also- I have a question. Oh, question, question. Shelly, yes, uh, here. If I have my e-learning transferred from the last site, that green button is working because I haven't been able to change the theme for my, my e-learning for the new one. Okay, it might be a, it might be a, a transfer issue, Marcella. So definitely talk to support because it just may be something they didn't take into account by transferring over that it, it won't be able to work with the theme editor. So talk to support and let them know and let them get with the developers, okay? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, we also have the ability to display the progress of the lesson to the student. So we can you know, give them information about their progress as they're going through the lesson. And then you also have an area here for custom CSS or cascade styling sheets. So this allows you to customize the look of your, uh, of your uh, course by saying, I want to use this font, this color, this size. I want to use um, bold font uh, in this area. So there's a lot of different things you can do with CSS, but you have to be very knowledgeable to be able to do that. So my suggestion is that if you don't know what CSS is, then don't do anything with that uh, area because you may uh, mess up a few things. Um, the next one is the main page. And this is what I was telling you a few minutes ago. Right now, the uh, display setup is standard which means that the descriptions is gonna show on the homepage of the course. But I can change that and do an iframe and actually put a URL in there and iframe what I want to show on the homepage of the course. And that means the description is not gonna show up. Or I can choose an image and then actually add an image there in place of the description. Okay, so I can do three different things on that homepage. I can do the standard description that I put up in the general area at the top. I can put a URL of a page I've already created that I want to iframe in there as the homepage, or I can just put an image in there as the homepage, okay? So I'm gonna change it to standard, and then I'm gonna click save. And now everything I've done so far is saved in the system. The only thing I haven't done is I haven't put together any module or lessons. So let's go ahead and jump into that. I'm gonna click modules and lessons. And right now there's nothing there. So I can either click the plus sign over here on the right hand side that says add module, or I can click this bright green button right here that says add module. So I'm gonna click add module and we'll just call this module one. I know that's really descriptive. And then for the description, I'll say module one and then create module. And so that adds the module in there for me. So this is almost like um, you've got all of your lessons and you're gonna break your lessons down into modules. So these are like buckets. So bucket one, lesson one, two, three, and four go in there. Bucket two, module two, lesson four, or five, six, seven, eight go in there. So you can kind of start breaking up your lessons into sections, which actually is much easier on the student when they have it broken up like that. So you can actually add all your modules in at the same time. So I can go add and module two, and then module two and create modules. Really, I actually named each module and then put the lesson and each lesson had a name on it. Good, you can do you can do this. This is completely flexible. You do it how you wanna do it. You do not have to do it the Shelly Turner way. You can do it the DeVita way. That's another thing I love about this is it's very flexible as well. All right, so we've got four different modules in there. Now the fun is to go in there and put our lessons in. So in each module, if I go over to the right-hand side, I've got a little plus button. That's where I can add a lesson. I can also click that down arrow. If I've got lessons in there, it'll kind of expand it and show me what the lessons are. I can also click duplicate and actually duplicate a module. I can click the little pencil icon and edit the module, which is just editing the name and the description. Or if I don't want a module anymore, I can click the trash can and just dump it. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a lesson. So I'm gonna click the plus sign. And here's where, this is so cool. This is where the fun is really at with the e-learning. So I can go into the general area and I can type the name of this lesson. So I'm just gonna say lesson one. And then here I can put in a description of what we're gonna do in this lesson. So the students will learn how to create a TikTok account, okay? And then it says duration in minutes. So we'll say this will last about 15 minutes. And then I can designate, is this an easy, medium or hard lesson? I'm gonna put easy and then I'm gonna click content. Now in the content area, you get to choose what type of content you want to put into your lesson. So you've got several choices. You can do a YouTube video. So it will pull a YouTube video in. You can do a Vimeo video. 
you can actually upload a video from your computer. Now, I want to remind you that if you do that, it's going to count against your 10 gigabytes that you have for uh, space, hosting space. So I would kind of, if you're going to do a lot of uh, courses, I definitely would not upload all the videos directly to hosting at, with BuilderAll. Um, I would go with something like Vimeo or YouTube so you don't use up your whole 10 gigabytes of space. Um, the next one is videos from Amazon S3, which is a video hosting service. So if you have Amazon S3, you can actually uh, connect it from there. SoundCloud, which is where audio files are at. So you can actually connect an audio file for them to listen to. A slide share presentation, a PDF file, a web page. So I want you to think about this a minute. If you've got courses that you've already made in Cheetah and you don't want to remake them in e-learning, as in pull everything over, you can actually get the URL and put it in there and it will iframe that page. So you don't have to rebuild it. You just iframe it right into the e-learning. You can also do HTML code. So if you know HTML code, which I do, I actually love HTML. You can actually code it yourself and put it in there. You can also add an image for the lesson or you can have just text for the lesson. So let's go ahead and do a YouTube video and then we'll go grab a quick YouTube link. So let me see if I can find a good YouTube video. So YouTube. And da, 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 da. here we go. Um, let's see. I have no idea what all these things are, but um, international homeless. Okay. Looks like no. Shark Tank. That looks like a good one. So we'll get the link to the Shark Tank video and we'll bring it back to e-learning and we'll drop it in there just like that. And then I'm going to not create lesson yet. I want to show you a couple more things before I create it. The next thing I have is drip. And that's not going to show until I edit the lesson. And it also requires student registration. So we won't be able to drip because I don't have registration turned on. Um, and then I have links, which doesn't show until I edit. Files, which won't show until I edit. Tests, which won't show until I edit. And comments, which won't show until I edit. So the first thing I need to do is set up my general settings for a lesson, my content of what I want for my lesson. And then I want to do create lesson. So now my lesson is actually created. And now I can go in and edit. So I'm going to click edit. And what you're going to see now is drip is actually available if I have student registration, which I don't. But I'm going to stop sharing a minute and tell you what drip is because it's a really cool feature. So I want everybody to make sure you're buckled in. This is a cool one. You don't want to fall out of your chair. But what it is, is it gives you the ability to drip feed your content of your lessons over time. So let's say that you've got 30 lessons and you want those 30 lessons to be delivered over 30 days and you do not want them to go into those lessons early. You can actually set up a drip, which means on day one, they get lesson one. They cannot get into two, three, four, five, six, all the way to 30. Day two, they get lesson two and they cannot get into three, four, five, six, seven, all the way to 30. So it literally drips their content for them. So they have to baby step through the course instead of jumping all around and skipping lessons and stuff like that. Because if I was a student and I didn't have drip, I would be done with the course in, in like one day, <laughs> right? So this is a way to force people like me to have to take it over time and, and do it differently than if they did it on their own. Chip, go ahead. Can you cluster the option? So you have like a week's worth of lessons at a time and they could go absolutely. to any of those and then it stops until the next week? You absolutely can. So let's say that you want um, the first five lessons to drip the first week. You can drip those immediately and then nothing else drips until seven days later when the second week starts and they get the next five lessons. So each lesson has its own drip and you decide when it drips and they can drip at the same time. That's really fun to say, right? Drip, you can drip it. Um, it's almost like you could whip it, except you can drip it. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, Bridget, go ahead. Hey, can you set it up to where uh, the next lesson will unlock when they complete the first one? Um, I don't think we have that capability yet. Okay. I don't think we have that yet. We have the test for the lessons. We'll go over that in a minute, but um, we can't restrict it so that they have to make this before they can go to the next lesson. Not mm -hmm. yet, but that's that's in the list. Okay. Okay. Um, Chris, go ahead. Um, this is not about the, I was just looking at some of the comments here. Just uh, two, There's two questions in the comments. One, uh, before we get too far away from where we are, uh, can uh, Ariana wanted to see if we could see a sample of putting a website in, how that would oh, yeah, be absolutely. like. Yes. And then the other question while you're doing that, uh, you may have already answered, I had to step away. Can you make your own custom design certificate and upload that? You can't yet. Um, we're looking at having that capability later, but right now there's only a choice of about four or five different color designs, but no different designs that you can upload that are, that are specific to you. So those are good questions. 
right? Um, other questions? I saw another hand somewhere. Um, Sharon. <laughs> Sharon's flagging me down. <laughs> Sorry, I'm on the couch relaxing. Shelly, <laughs> I was looking at this. I like to do text and then like um, images too with, within the text, mm -hmm. like to, to kind of, um, I guess, display something or explain something. Is mm -hmm. that possible yet? Um, it's either going to be text or it's going to be, um, you can pull in a website. So you can actually choose to create it like on a sheet of a web page and then bring that URL in and then it can be whatever you want it to be. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Any other questions, you guys? Caro, and then I'll get pressed in. Hey, um, I, you, I tried the uh, certificate. You know, I tried, I tried it. Mm -hmm. And on my, on my side, it didn't take into account the date. The date in is 1970. Wow. Let's well, see. What happens is we've got this new feature now where it takes you back in time. So oh, that's <laughs> so happy to be now. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So I wanted to say. Yeah. This. Definitely, definitely message that in the Trello board for me, Caro, so that we can get the developers to track that down. Okay. I already did, but I wanted if if it was on my side or if it was just uh, a bug. I, I haven't seen it, but I I haven't seen every single corner nook and cranny yet. So. Um, that's definitely one that take a screenshot of what you've got and get it on that Trello board for us and we'll see if we can get the developers to jump on it. Okay. Yeah, I did it. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Preston, go ahead. Yeah, maybe I'm jumping ahead. Can you have more than one course in here? I mean, I would like to set up a learning center and have a bunch of courses in there and they just purchase the whole learning center on a monthly basis. Yeah. Um, how many do you want, Preston? Two? I've got about 100. 20? 100? You can do it. You can have 200 okay. if you want. You are so special that I'm giving you permission to have 200 courses if you want to. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you can't. I mean, you're limited. You're they only have to register for the one for the learning center. They don't have to register and buy each course. Well, they will have to, uh, you'll probably have to do it very creatively. You may have to do that as a membership area instead of uh, e-learning, which is very doable, right? Um, so they can buy once through checkout, get access to the membership area, and that membership area has access to all the e-learning courses. So that's, it's very doable. Um, but uh, you, you can actually do that. And you, the only limitation actually is the amount of, of space that you have. You have 10 gigabytes of space. So if you can do 100 courses or 200 courses and keep the content that you're putting on Builder All servers uh, 10 gigabytes or less, then you're golden. And you should be able to do that. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions, you guys? All right, let's take a look at what it's like to iframe a web page. Because this is actually really cool. And this is what um, I think it was Sharon was asking about. So Sharon, are you buckled in? Because this is actually a cool feature. Um, so let me share my screen. And uh, we'll go to um, the general and content. We'll go to content. And on the content type, I'm going to go um, web page. And on the page URL, I'm going to pull in one of my uh, my, one of my other websites. So I'm going to say HTTP forward forward slash forward slash um, social media explosion.com. So this is actually a sales page, right? It's not even a, a class page, a, a lesson page. It's just a sales page. And I'm going to go ahead and save the changes and then do my big save because big save is my friend. Um, and then I'm going to get the embed code and we'll take a look at what this looks like. So I'm going to copy the URL and then we'll go in here and paste it. And let's take a look at what it looks like. So this is actually what my course looks like right now, which is really, really cool already, right? I've got my picture here. I've got my name. I've got the course name right here. I've got all this different information here. If I go to module one, I've got lesson one. And when I click to load it, it should load the URL. It may be a little bit behind. So let's see if we can load it again. Go load again, load, load, load. It's thinking about it. Let me do a www. That might be the problem. So. We'll go back to our lesson and we'll edit and content. And I'll go www. And we'll see if that makes a difference. So save changes and then save again. And then we'll go back to the course and reload. And this actually worked yesterday. I'm not sure why it's not working today, but it does pull in a full page. Whatever it actually pulls in the full page. Um, where normally it would take up the entire uh, page from end to end, it only takes up from this side to this side. So it looks like it's a full page that's put right in the middle there. So what you were asking, Sharon, about being able to do text and images, and th just think about it. Now you can do text, images, accordion, 
uh, galleries, uh, videos, whatever you want in that page, and then just pull that URL in and you should be uh, good to go. So that is the exciting. I'm not sure why it's not pulling for me today, but you know, could be just pitching a fit. Did but, you add an um, extra step, Shelly? I don't know. Let's see. So we've got less than, and we've got, let me do this. I'll go trash and okay. There we go. Now we'll really do it. We'll say, all right, lesson. And we'll say Shelly's first TikTok lesson. And learn how to create a TikTok account. There you go. The duration is 15 minutes. It's super easy. Content is a web page. And then I'll get the actual HTML code. So we can go here, social media explosion. Here we go. And I will copy. And then I will paste. There we go. And I'll create those. That should be all you need to do, right? Well, and then I need to save right here. Yeah, well, of course, of course. Yep, yep. And then let's see what happens. So I'll go here and we'll refresh. And that is it this way. There we go. And we'll refresh this page and go to module one. And Shelly's first lesson. There we go. Yeah, you had an extra step. So there we go. So you can see it takes that exact page and just dumps it right in there. So you can make it um, look however you want it to look. And uh, I think it's a fabulous option because it just creates an unlimited method of being able to deliver the content, right? Not just text, not just video, it's whatever you want. Absolutely. Would the page be locked? Like if we lock that page, is there a problem pulling that URL into it, into the e-learning? Um, yeah, I'm sure it would be if there was, if it was in a protected membership area, yes. Okay. Shelly, the only step that you miss when you put in the, um, the website, you said HTTP, you didn't have it as. Yep, I, I saw that, thank you. Yep, that's it, you're exactly right. I had HTTP instead of HTTPS. So yes, but that's how the, the uh, URL would work. And, uh, and again, I think it just kind of stretches what we have available. Also, when we talk about um, our lessons, another thing that we can edit, uh, if I go into this lesson and click the edit button, remember we had drip and that allows you to drip by the day, minute or hour. So you can drip it five minutes after they register, uh, an hour after they register, two days after they register, whatever you wanna drip for that lesson. But then you also have the ability to add links. So right now there's no links in the lesson, but if I click add new lesson, I can um, put in a link URL. So let me find a good URL. Go to this one right here and we'll add it in. So there's the URL and there's the description. Uh, awesome YouTube video. Here we go. And I'm going to click create link. So now that actually has a link associated with that lesson. And then I can also add files. So I can click files. And it says there's no files in this lesson right now. So I can click new file. And I can click right here to add a new file. So I'm going to click that and it's going to look on my computer. And let's see if we can find an interesting file. I don't know if I have any PDFs in here or not. Hold on a second. That is my daughter. Let's see if I can get my daughter. There she is right there. We'll decline her. All right. So um, click and drag and build her all. And let's see. Day two. Show me about this. There we go. So we'll do, there we go. 37 inspirational quotes. That's pretty good. So there's the document, the name of it, description, inspirational quotes for entrepreneurs. There we go. And then I can click add file. And now there's actually a file associated with that lesson as well. And then I can click test. And this is the exact same thing I had for the final test, except this is a test for the lesson. So I have to go ahead and set up the result score type. So remember, I can do it by percentage or by the value of the right answers. I like percentage, much easier in my brain. And then the pass percentage, um, mine is usually a 70% to pass. And now I can start adding questions. So I click add questions and I can choose again, a short answer, true, false, or multiple choice. And I can put in my question. So um, which platform do you like the best? And then I can put um, build wrong. Oh. To choose wisely. And so the question value is one. And let's see. Add a variant. So here we go. 
and I'm going to say Builder All. And then I'm going to say Wix. And then we'll say Weebly. And of course, the correct answer is Builder All. So I select the correct answer and then I click Add Question. And so now that question is there. I can add another question. I can add as many questions as I want to. I can keep on adding. Um, and then uh, comments here, I can uh, disable comments on the lesson or by default, I can keep them enabled, which means that when the student takes this lesson, they'll be able to actually post comments in there and I can actually answer as well. So I've made some changes. I'll click save changes and then I'll click the big save to make sure everything is safe. And now I actually have those on my site. So I can click this again and refresh. And let's see if they show up. So down at the bottom, See if I can move this out of the way. Um, Got to refresh, 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 refresh. So here we are, the URL. And if you'll notice, I've got a file right here. I've got links right here. I've got comments right here. So the student can actually make comments and send it. And then I can go back to the content right here. So those are all the places that you can look for that additional content to go into your lessons, okay? Any questions about that, you guys? Chip, go ahead. Is this testing stuff available in the modules or only the tests and at only the end? Only available in the lessons and a final test. Okay. No testing at the modules. Um, Linda, go ahead. Yes, hi, Shirley. So hi. Uh, when, um, when a student makes a comment, if that's open, is that just between the instructor and the student or anyone that's involved in that session for the class? I believe it's just between the student and the instructor. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hello. Yes. Go ahead, Carol. Uh, I wanted to know if you can um, uh, delete the comments because actually I, I, I tried and it's not between the instructor and the, and the person. You could do that, but it's between also students. Oh, is it all students? Yes, okay. I, that's, so that's good. But in a way, I wanted to know, could we, is there a way to delete the, those comments? Yeah, um, let's take a look right here on share our screen. And we'll go back to e-learning and we'll go to the lesson settings. So I'm gonna click on the edit lesson and comments right here. And I can disable comments. And then I can click save and then the big save. And now if I go back to my course and I refresh, you can see that I don't have comments there anymore. Okay, so that's that's for disabling the, the comments. But let's say if I have one student that is very nice, the other one is not nice and he puts bad comments, I cannot take those comments out, right? Nope. Okay, good. Thank you. You're welcome. Kelly, I have a uh, question. Uh, okay, who was that? Sabrina, go ahead. That was Sabrina. Can you um, go back and look? So I created a course for my employee and uh, she comes to me and says, I've completed my course. And maybe that's part of the race she's going to get, for example. Is there a way for me to go look to see what she's completed? Yeah. Um, if you go to the uh, right here into e-learning and then um, let's see. Let me think of it. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I, uh, Shady, I think it's on the, um, on the course. Oh, it's on the front. Yeah, that's right. So right here, if we go to apps and new e-learning. And right here is where you'd look at it in the course data. So when you click that, it's going to pull up any messages that they send you, um, your student list if you've got registered students, and then any test results. And that's one thing you want to make sure that if they're doing this to be able to um, you know, get a raise, then you want to make sure that they, ha they have a test that they have to take and pass. So you'll actually see the results here. All right. Thank you. Okay. What else you got? Uh, Chris? Yes, uh, Sanjay asked if they can download materials. Like you put a PDF up there that you, you yeah. want them to download some stuff? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let's take a look at that because I added those files. So let's take a look at what happens when we access those files. So if I click here, there's a file right there. So I click on that. There's that file. So if I click on it, it's going to actually download it right onto my computer. Okay. So any files that I add in there, if they click on those files, they are downloadable files and they will download to their computer. Okay. Um, John asked, can we see how the payment option works? John, that's the only thing that I'm going to actually skip tonight. And it's because the payment option going through the super checkout is not actually ready yet. Um, they're really close. Like 
that close. I was hoping maybe we'd get it today, but it's not quite ready. Exactly, Chris. It's just it's painfully close. So as soon as they get it, I'll actually shoot a training video on it. All the other training videos are up on uh, YouTube already, and we'll just throw that one into the mix, and we'll make sure that you can get access to that to be able to get the training on how to set it up for purchasing through the super checkout. So that one's actually really cool. Um, any other questions before, before I show you a couple more things? Uh, Preston. When you're setting up the email for comments or questions from the students, can that be any email or does it have to be one that's registered in Builder All? It could be any email. Okay. Uh, Lisa Hembaledi. Hi there. Thank you for doing this. Um, my question is about the size of the font. Yes, I wear glasses and I need them. <laughs> and I couldn't find where when you wrote in the description of the module or the description of the lesson, mm -hmm. it seems to automatically show up in a size font that I can't figure out how to adjust. And I didn't know if you knew how to do that. You know, I don't know where to adjust that. I don't know if we have that capability. Um, let me take a real quick look. So in the, um, da, 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 right here, in the general information, so we've got right here, we've got different size fonts for like heading one, two, three, four, all the way to seven. You totally and, then, mm -hmm, and then a paragraph font, but the paragraph font is pretty much defined. We don't have the ability to change the size. So if you did want it to be bigger, you'd have to highlight it and then change it to like a heading seven or let's see, heading six. That's really small. Heading five. So you see as we're getting bigger, it actually gets a little bit bigger. So that's really the only um, control I see is just being able to change the the type of font it is, but we don't have the ability to change it to 14 or 13 or 12 or 11. Um, and this right here, it is bolded, so I can um, unbold it. But that's how you change it is highlight it and then change the font, uh, the defined font right here. Okay, I, I think it's where you wrote in the description of the module, or maybe it's if you if you go look at the lesson that you published at the very mm -hmm. bottom of your of that URL, there's a little description I think that you had added in there for that lesson. Mm -hmm. Right here. And it's it's that font. Oh oh, this one right here maybe. If you go to the lesson and scroll to the very bottom of that lesson. There's a little piece of uh, learn how there. to. That's what I'm trying to adjust. That's weird. That needs to be at the top, doesn't it? That should be at the top not at the bottom. I don't think there's a way to adjust that one at all because I did that one. Let's see where we did that one at. We did that one at um, lessons and modules. And then we did right here on the lesson. And then right here, we can actually just change it using the same thing that we have in the description. So if we wanted it really big, we could put it like that. Okay, great. And then the other, the other thing would be, is there any way to get that on top of the other I content? I think that was uh, something that somebody submitted to the developers today. Mike, was that you? I, I can't hear you. I'm so sorry, you're, you're muted. Who did you ask? Mike? Hey, yeah, I did, I did, uh, there you go. You, you did submit it? Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking that was one that you'd submitted. So yeah, we've got beta testers, you guys, that's still beta testing and still finding mm -hmm. these issues. So when they find them, they submit them to the beta test board. And we've got a few of our beta testers in here right now. Go beta testers. And uh, we're <laughs> they're awesome. And they submit their um, issues that they find. And that was one of them that I saw, I think, today or yesterday, was that the, <laughs> that the name of the lesson was like, whoop, down at the bottom. So the developers have got it, and they'll work on uh, fixing that. So hopefully that shows at the top. And hopefully it comes in uh, where you don't have to configure it. It's already uh, bolded and pretty big so that it's pretty prominent what the name of the lesson is. Okay. I find the text editing capabilities in a lot of the stuff on Cheetah and this far from satisfactory. Um, I've got a video that's coming out, Mike, and I want you to watch it because I teach you how to manage the text a lot better. You can manage it. You just have to know the tricks and the tips. And so I shared a couple of the tips and the tricks, so hopefully it'll help you a lot. I don't think we should have to be able to teach people tricks. but <laughs> It's not that hard, I promise. It's, it's a little confusing, but it's not that hard. Um, Cindy, go ahead. All right, so I apologize if I missed this uh, nuance here, but I'm thinking about making money and let's say I want to sell. I'm thinking about that too. That's such a great <laughs> idea. I love that idea. And besides just creating my own course that I control, let's say once the coffee shop opens, they have a barista exam for anybody who's being hired. Can I sell them so that their baristas go through us and then they see the results without, is that possible? 
there's not really a good way to do that because you have to go through the dashboard to be able to get to the list of courses to be able to get to the results, the course data. So there's just not really a good way to do that without them having their own account. And because it's on e-learning, they'd have to have, I think it's a premium account that they have to have. So um, it, the, the other way you can do it is you can just give them a report uh, periodically. So uh, once, maybe once a month or once a week, however, you, however they want it done, you can actually do a screen print of that screen to tell them what else happened. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. That's a good question. Um, Hi, Shelley. Hi. Hi, Shelley. Great job. Yes. <laughs> um, I have a question because uh, uh, th this might be another video course that, that, that you have to create for, okay, once we're done with the e-learning course, now there's two things. You want students to go through a free uh, course, right? So how do they enter? as um, you know, free uh, with the sign up, the whole procedure. And then the second is if it's a paid course. My mm -hmm. understanding is once you've done with this app, you still send iframe to Cheetah, right? Mm -hmm. Th that's my understanding, bring it there to a page. Mm -hmm. And after that, what happens? Do you go through the super checkout membership uh, procedure to yes. have um, it paid wait. through PayPal? And Yeah, the way that it will be set up, it's not working yet, but the way that it will be set up is that you send them through the super checkout when they're buying the course. And when you are setting up that product, you say, if they buy this product, release this e-learning area. That's what we had in the old e-learning. And so we'll have the same thing in the new e-learning. It's just not quite set up and ready to go yet. So right okay. now, the, the really the best thing you can do is actually, if you have paying customers, you can still set them up through the super checkout. But every time you get a payment to come in, you'll get their email. So set up their email and then set up a, a default uh, password for them. And you, you set it up in the system manually and uh, add them to Mailing Boss. So it will mail them their email and their uh, password so they can get in. So in the future, is there like a one touch, I mean, shorter, like three steps button, okay, for, yeah. to, for future, that? That's completely automated. Yeah, that's a difficulty that I find now is, okay, mm -hmm. it's easy doing the e-learning, but then how do we sell it? Right. right. My, my suggestion would be, and this is the way I, I would set it up. If I was setting up a course right now to sell, I would actually set it up so that it was in super checkout to purchase. Okay. When they purchase, it goes into a special um, mailing box account that there's an email that goes out that says, here's your email and here's your password. And it's just a default password, like one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And then on my end, as soon as I get a sale that comes in, I'll take that email and register them myself and give them the password of one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that's a temporary measure in future that will yep. be more that's automated. Temporary. That's what that's you're saying. Right. Yep. Okay, all right, and for the free, so I guess you just put it there in your, um, e e what do you call that, Cheetah page, mm -hmm. and then go through still the super checkout or? No, no you don't have to send them to the super checkout. All you have to do is send them to the page where they can choose register and they can register and they're automatically given access. Okay, great, thanks. You're welcome. Yeah, I can't wait to do the um, the training on how to set it up for a paid account because that's, that's what we all need, right? Is uh, the training to be able to set it up so they buy the course so that we can make money. Because like Cindy said, I'm here to make money too. So um, definitely, uh, Cindy, go ahead. Another quick question. Is there a notification like when somebody actually takes the final test do we get a notification that they've completed the course or, the, or follow up email or, hey, you want the next that's course? A, that's a really good question because I have finished the, the course in a couple of the sample uh, courses, but I, I don't think I've gotten any emails to say, hey, hey, Shelly's completed the course and, and she's done. I think it literally is just a, a manual, you mm -hmm. know, you need to check to see if they're finished. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. That'll be a good upgrade. That's a good upgrade. And just to remind you guys, this is actually a really fabulous program just on the surface of what we have now. It's improved over what we had. It's actually beautiful. It's mobile responsive. So we've gone a, a couple of steps up, but we have steps to go up even more. So like Cindy, when she was asking about the email, that would be an absolutely fabulous feature to have. So you guys have a lot of power. Remember those things that you'd like to see inside of e-learning and submit those to support and support will get them to the developers. And what the developers do is they put it on a list of stuff and they prioritize what they need to do to, to constantly be improving the different apps in our platform. So you could be the one person that has the perfect idea to make our platform better. And Cindy, I think yours was great. Um, Ariane, and all that uh, stuff that you were talking about is coming. So there's you guys have a lot of power 
Um, I know you don't feel like it sometimes, right, Mike? <laughs> sometimes you're like, what? <laughs> but you do have a ton of power in making sure you get those suggestions to support. And support is really good at getting them to the developers. And then, of course, the developers are really good at really taking a look at it and triaging. That's what they need to do is triage. And they pick the most important things that need to get done, put them in the list, and they get them done. And that's actually how we've gotten here today is a couple years ago, we didn't have a lot of what we have now. But users made suggestions. They gave them to the developer. The developer triaged them and put them on a list. And now we have all kinds of things that have actually been user driven. So it's really, really exciting. Um, I saw a hand just a second ago. Who was that? Uh, Carl. Hey, thank you for this. This is awesome. Really enjoying it. Good. Yeah, I'm enjoying it too. <laughs> well, just a couple of quick things. If I could just, uh, it's on the money side. Um, I want to speak to Cindy's thing and uh, then talk about something I just did today. I actually sold a $5,000 consulting project on this and uh, had a partner in my in my home actually sold him the $100 platform. He does not care about doing any of the heavy lifting. I'm going to train his staff to do that. And also, I do have a background in internet marketing for about 17 years. So I understand this platform is like unlike anything I've ever seen. So selling it as a consulting, if you want to make some money that way, I can see that, number one. Secondly, um, regarding the uh, reports, I think one way to do that would be to export uh, it in a CSV uh, ex, uh, PDF file reporting module and notifications. So you could actually set up a consulting project with different businesses. You could test their staff for them. You'd set up the whole training program specific to the staff. They would configure the questions for you. And then you can go to, we could get the uh, development department to kind of, you'd have to put it together in, in, in like bullet points, but man, that sounds like something you could just add on as an add on service to, to businesses like that. I know, right? And then we'd all be crying, amazing. going, oh my gosh, it's so good. <laughs> yeah, it's getting better and better. I can see that. Yeah, it is. It sure Thanks. is. Yeah. Carl, take those ideas, please, and put them into. Uh, I'm putting, I'm writing them down. Yeah. yeah. Sounds yeah, good. Thanks. Jelly? Yeah, I have sorry. one more. Yeah, sure. one more question. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, one of the, I've been with BA for quite some time, you know that. And one of the struggles really is when you do the project and you're all alone, like mm -hmm. you get so stumped. And yeah. you almost like give up, like <laughs> what's the next step? So I'm wondering if there are people here like doing their courses, if there's a class that all these people have on a, a project, taking on a project and they kind of meet uh, because they have a project at hand and work uh, to what do you call resolve the issues that they're having. I think there's 36 people in this um, uh, Zoom right now mm -hmm. and just brainstorm, hey, I did this or something for two minutes, three minutes. So what, what are you facing? I think that's a better team collaboration because uh, I love your, your lectures, but the thing is when we get down to it and do it, then you get stumped. I don't know about the other people here, like what? Yeah, I get that all the time where I have people go, I saw you do it, Shelly, I saw yes. you do it. But I, it doesn't look the same as when you did it. <laughs> right, so if there are people right now who are currently really wanting to do the e-course, if they wanna you know, have a group together, okay, just meet for a Zoom, okay, this is where I'm at, just keep it, you know, something informal, but at least yeah. it helps. It helps in the project, you know, like a, the student project. Okay, right. and, and moving forward. I, if anybody's open to that. Yes, I'm open. And I am actually, I did it. I did a <laughs> course, 17 lessons. You're the I, one. <laughs> for uh, f four years now, I'm trying to find a place to do that. I've done uh, different platforms, maybe five of those. I, I found the learning here. I was not really happy with it. But then I created membership site. And I try, I try to sell the, the, the course with that. But now that this e-learning is there, with what you showed today, Shelly, where you can bring the page, because my, my thing was we had only the content and then you need to go there to have the link. It was, not, it was not really okay for me. But now that's absolutely perfect. And I have done it. I can show it to you, Ariane, no problem. You just tell me. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Um, so anybody's welcome to join as long as you already have a, an e-course you know, on the way about to be born. And it's just going to be like quick meetings uh, on collab. I, I nothing, that, nothing techy. <laughs> I would say post into Facebook. Um, some of our, you guys can post into groups and say, hey, I'm looking to start a Monday night meetup. Uh, let's talk about e-learning and let's get some courses built together. Um, if you're looking to build a course, let's all work together to do it. And, you know, set a time, a uh, regular day and just meet consistently like that. Um, I would love to do that, you guys, but my time is like that now. So, uh, you've done a great job already <laughs> just teaching this you. and this uh, is fantastic there's, there's so yeah. many certified partners that i know <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, no, no, definitely, Shelly. I mean, I mean, you're so precious where you are at right now. I've seen so like many freaking out on me. So many great, incredible changes about the fact the organization. You know, I, I see a lot, a lot of changes, and I know it's coming from you. Some of them, I mean, the most of them, and you're doing a fantastic job. Thank but you. right now, learning for two years now with you, I mean, you know, I'm ready to share what what I know. Yeah. I created this beautiful membership site. 17 lesson, I can show it to you and, and show it exactly how I did, you know, the super checkout and everything. And it's, uh, it's ready to sell. That's great. I, I think that's great. And I think that with you guys starting to take some of the reins, especially our certified partners, that that's kind of why they went into being certified partners was so they could turn around and, and either, you know, teach other people or give lessons, paid lessons, or, I mean, there's a lot of ways that you can, you guys can take this and, um, and kind of turn it around and monetize it. And it's really, really exciting because if you help each other, I think you'll be stunned at what everybody benefits, the, how many ways everybody benefits, because everybody's going to come out of it with something better than what they had before they went in. And I'll tell you, there's a ton of people right now on uh, Builderall that are not here at this uh, live, and they probably won't have a chance to do the replays. And they are just screaming for somebody to spend time with them, do a Zoom session, 25 bucks, um, do a... Um, a a little bit of consulting, a hundred bucks. Um, there's tons of them out there, you guys. So if you dig into Builderall and start really learning specific areas in Builderall, you've got a market just in Builderall. <laughs> you really do. So um, it's pretty amazing. I think if I, if Eric were to call me tomorrow and say, Shelly, um, I can no longer pay you to work for Builderall, <laughs> I would be making a ton of money <laughs> because I would then bust out on my own and start doing some independent consulting, I would do one-on-one -on -one training, I would do a lot of stuff with the Builderall platform that um, would definitely make me money very, very fast. You guys can do that right now, right? You guys can do that right now. So um, grab something like this e-learning, master it, and then get out there and do some training inside the group, um, do just some basic training, and I think you'll be stunned. I get messages every day, people asking me, if they can pay me to um, do some one-on-one -on -one training, one-on-one -on -one consulting. Um, can I build them a website? Can I build them a mobile app? Can I build them a site bot? Um, and of course I can do all those things, but I don't have time. So you guys pick it up and do it for me. <laughs> it's Sabrina, can I ask another question? Yeah, go ahead, please. I just wanted to ask you a question about the Facebook groups. What's mm -hmm. the difference between Builderall Official and Builderall Community? I can never figure out which one I'm supposed to post in for what. The Builderall Official, is the official Builderall users group. So if you are a Builderall user, whether you're using the tools or an affiliate, you're in that group. The Builderall community used to be the Builderall support group, but I asked support to no longer be providing support in Facebook like they were, because it was actually sucking their time away so they couldn't do tickets or what was happening you guys, and this was really bad, was they'd have tickets, they'd have Facebook support, they had Skype support, they had WhatsApp support, they had Telegram support, and it got so confusing where somebody would ask me a question and I'd spend an hour trying to find where the question was at. Cause I couldn't remember, was it in Facebook? Was it in Telegram? Was it in WhatsApp? Was it in Skype? Was it in a ticket? Was it um, on my text on my phone? Where was it? So um, we moved all of support to tickets and they still answer a few questions every now and again, but the bulk of everything they do, like 90% of what they do, 95% of what they do is now ticket form. So Builderall community is now the place you go where you can ask a question and the community will jump in and actually help. We do have support that's uh, lurking and they will answer if they have time, but the bulk of the answers actually come from the community members, okay? Well, Isn't that just what she's asking for? Well, I, I have asked, I have tried to post in both communities several times and <laughs> it never seems to get posted. It's always a waiting for a moderator to approve it and it, Never oh really? I don't. I don't know. In a timely fashion, either. So that's kind of why I'm asking. Uh, I don't know. They they monitor and get them approved pretty fast. So I'm not real sure what's up with the with the post. Um, we do have people that are monitoring that English is not their first language. So sometimes you have a perfectly good post, but when they read it, they just may read something into it that isn't there because they're just it's, English is not their first language. So just be patient with them for sure on that. And then um, anytime that you need a question answered, Sabrina, and you're not getting it in Facebook, jump right into support and either do a live chat with support or do a ticket. Okay. Okay. Um, Chris, go ahead. Uh, yeah, John had asked a question a little while back. I thought it was kind of interesting. Um, he is asking, would there be pre-made funnels possibly 
in the funnel club of e-learning courses. Oh, that would be fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. That needs to be posted to support because that would be absolutely fabulous. Yeah. I would love that one. And I see Will uh, doing the flag my down thing. So go ahead, Will. Hello. Can you hear me? Yep. I can hear you. Loud and clear. Um, I own a, a home call center. And before they get the job, they have to go through an um, e-learning course. So it is a way how you can still um, monetize this without going through the the whole thing. Right. So what you have to do, you have to get them to do a little test or anything how you want to do first. Then they pay for it out on the outside. Then you bring them into the e-learning course that you set up. And I think... Um, I've taken a couple of the classes and it's just like this, but you don't have the faces, but you got the chat. And then you got the instructor over here that's talking to you. Um, she can open it up for you can talk or she can mute everybody and just have chat. Um, <clears throat> with that, they do have what you would say homework. They got a special section for that also. And I think if you want a good example, I don't know if I can say this, but a, a good example you can look at um, G Suites. That's what um, the last one that they just switched over to is going over to G Suites. That's where they do all the e-learning e courses at. Cool. Now, now remember too, guys, that there's outside things that you can add into e-learning to kind of beef it up. So when Will was talking about a, a chat thing, remember that when you can pull in a web page, anything you put on that page is gonna be pulled in. So if you attach a Facebook Messenger bot to that page, you can actually, uh, that's integrated into your e-learning. Um, there's actually a, a way to pull in uh, Skype. So if you have Skype and want to use that as like an automated messaging system for your students, you can actually embed a Skype window in there and they can actually type their question. It goes straight to you, like in a live chat environment. So there's a lot of ways that you can create this as a very interactive uh, way of engaging with your students beyond just that asynchronous. Um, environment, right? Um, typically, when we think about e-learning courses like this, they're asynchronous, meaning you're not online at the same time. But if you integrate things like the Skype chat or something like uh, Facebook Messenger, it starts to become more synchronous because now they're on at the same time that you're on and you can live chat with them. Uh, you can also embed uh, YouTube videos. So if you want to do live YouTube videos into one of your lessons, you can do that. Um, there's a code you can get that if you have a YouTube channel and you've enabled live streaming, you can actually get that code and embed it into a web page and then that web page into e-learning and now you've got a live e-learning uh, lesson. So you have to really kind of think outside of the confines of e-learning a little bit and think about what can you do on that web page now that you can pull in to that e-learning to make it different, more um, dynamic rather than very static. And when you start thinking outside of the, the box a little bit, you realize how big that e-learning really is now. It really is great. Uh, any other questions, you guys? Will, go ahead. Will's flagging me down again. <laughs> okay. Um, Zoom is just one of the things that you can do also. Um, I think you can have like 100 people in one room and you can just flag them off where only you can be seen or whenever they want to talk, they will come up. Um, I think it's fourteen ninety nine. You can have a hundred people in one room, and with this one, I always forget the um, code to get in this room. But now Zoom, I can just go in, join meeting, and find um, two Tuesday nights meeting, and hit that and go straight Damn. <laughs> in the um, courses that I've taken. Is you just go hit a button, go to class, and it yep. pulls up the class. Yep, absolutely. And that could be as easily really as um, putting a button on each of the pages that says um, go to the live classroom or something like that, and it takes them into the Zoom link. So yeah, again, think outside of the box, you guys, and think outside of that uh, asynchronous environment and start thinking about how now with being able to pull a web page in, can you make it more dynamic? Can you make it less static, more dynamic, and make it as a, um, an interactive, engaging environment where you can actually talk back and forth to your students in real time uh, it is very exciting what you can do. Um, Preston, I think, had a question. Is that right? Yeah, Shelly, thank you. Is there a way to integrate other hosting services um, instead of Vimeo or 
YouTube? Well, I mean, you can do Amazon S3, or um, if it's another hosting service and they've got an embed code, you can get that embed code and do the embed code on the page. So yeah, there's several different ways you can do it for sure. But I do wanna, I do wanna say one thing though, and this is something that I see very, very often with new people that are coming into building an e-learning course. Um, this is my little soapbox. I'm gonna take a second to stand on the soapbox. Um, what I hear from a lot of people at the very beginning is before they ever get started, they haven't built their course, they haven't built a website, they don't even know what colors they want, they, they know nothing. All they know is they don't want anybody to steal their videos. They haven't even made videos yet, but they don't want anybody to steal their videos. Um, oh my gosh, don't worry about that yet, <laughs> right? Um, it's, it's okay. If you don't have anything to do for commodity, as in if somebody steals it, it's like a, worth a million dollars. Most of us don't have anything that valuable, that valuable in our videos, all right? You can use YouTube and unlisted videos to start with. It's okay. It really is okay. Um, and here's why I'm saying it's okay. Because when I first started out, I was making videos for uh, BuilderAll. And I could have been that type of person that said, I'm protecting all my videos. I'm going to make sure that nobody sees them unless they're on my team. And unless they're this, unless they're that, nobody. My videos are valuable. And what I'm doing is valuable, right? Um, what I found out is if I left them as unlisted and just um, kind of branded them really well with me, my personality, my name, Builder All Diva, all that kind of stuff, what I found out was I got way more attention <laughs> by doing that because then people took my videos and put them everywhere. And if you go to uh, YouTube and just type in Builder All, you'll see entire channels that are made of Builder All Diva videos. No kidding. They don't have anybody else's videos on them. It's not my channel, but they're all my videos. So get that content out there, whatever you can afford to give, get it out there, brand it heavily and let them steal it. Let them steal it because if you're branding, they're gonna come to you anyway, right? Don't give them the million dollar videos, but get, get value out there and get videos out there and let them steal it. And that way you're gonna get out there, you're gonna get seen, you're gonna get heard, people will find you and you will get business and there will be other people getting the business for you. So what I want, I think the soapbox part is don't stress about people stealing your videos because what we all have is, is good stuff, no doubt about it. But do we have million dollar proprietary videos that are just if somebody steals it, the world's gonna end because it's cured of cancer? No, so figure out what videos you can afford to let go out there to roam the internet and find homes and brand them heavily with your company name or your website or your brand or whatever it is and let the internet do the work for you. I don't think that I would be here in front of you today if I had been stingy with those videos, honestly. I was shooting hundreds of videos and just let them go out. And I'm here today, I think, because of that. Um, uh, Will, go ahead. Well, she's telling me just right. Because um, <laughs> I've heard about Bitterall from another affiliate but he was using her videos and I didn't join up under him. I came to Shelly and looked up her videos to see if it's something <laughs> like, and I came up under Shelly, not him. So put your own face on it. If you're going to do it, put your own face on it. Yeah. And just get it out there and don't worry. It's, it's so funny the, the the actual point is that new people worry so much before they've done anything, but they'll steal my videos, but they'll steal my videos. I'm like, oh my gosh, build your website first, build your course first, um, decide what you're going to sell your course for, shoot the videos first, <laughs> right? Do, do something first. And then if you've got this you know, million dollar course that then doesn't need to be on YouTube as unlisted, then you can start thinking about another way to do your videos, but get started first, right? Get somewhere first. Because you're not going to produce hundred thousand dollar videos right off the bat. You're going to ramp up there, and while you're ramping up there, you want to put that that information out there and let people take it. Let people put your name and face all over the place. Let them do it. Um, figure out what you want to give away and let them do it. Because I'm I'm testimonial right here. Amen. Uh, I I'm one that I definitely have succeeded because everybody stole those videos and I was happy that they did. Um, I also was very uh, I was very okay with people, I told people all the time, yeah, if you want my videos, just take them. And I'd even tell uh, people, if you want my videos, just uh, take my video and reshoot it with your voice in it. But I still had it branded enough to me that even if they overdubbed it with their voice, it was still my little builder all diva image that they'd see and you know little things in there that was me. So y'all, I couldn't, I couldn't lose. 
Um, and it was absolutely fabulous. So, uh, you know, listen to me now and hear me later. It's okay if they take your stuff. <laughs> it really is. Um, Jim, go ahead. Uh, great stuff tonight. Uh, can I ask my mystery affiliate ID question now? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, well, wait, give me two more things I want to show, okay? Two yep. more things I want to show. All right, so now that I'm off my soapbox, so I'm back to under five feet tall, um, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to uh, embed the e-learning into a web page, so if you want to do a membership area. So let's go ahead and take a real quick look at that so you can see how that's done. So I'm going to go to the top here where it says get embed code, and I'm going to copy the iframe right here. Okay, so I just click this little copy button and it copies for me. And now I'm going to go over and I'm going to open up Cheetah. And we'll just do a test web page. So I'll open this up and then I'll go to right here. It looks like it's as good as any. And this one likes, looks like it's as good as any. And we'll open up the editor and I need to add a panel. So I'll add a panel. I'll add a blank panel right there. And then I'll delete this text because I don't need it. And now all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to add and then elements and I'll go over here to iframe. When I open up iframe, I'll click and drag that bad boy over. Now I have this little box right here and I'm going to click on it to activate the settings. I'll go to general settings and right here where it says embed doc. I'm going to go ahead and put my cursor in there and paste that HTML code that I got and click apply. And so I've got this box and it looks kind of wonky because it's not open all the way. So I can choose to drag it open or I can click full width and it will actually go the full width of what I have available. And then all I have to do is make it taller. So are you seeing now that I can actually um, show my entire page here? Right, so make it taller and taller and then line it up with the bottom of the panel and shazam. And so now I've got that particular page embedded. Now I can make it go full width if I want to or I can uncheck full width and I can make it the, just the width of the visible area, just like this. I can take it and drag it like that. And now you can see that I can just put it within those guidelines and then make the panel taller, like that. And then click and drag it, just like this, within the guidelines, just like this. And now I've put that page, it's technically embedded in the web page for me. And then I click save and publish. And now we can actually preview that page. So it was the font page. So I'll go back to my page listings and we'll take a look at what it looks like. So I'm going to go to the web page and refresh. And that's what it looks like right now. It looks a little bit different because it's a little bit closed in, but we still have the menu. It's just actually a pop out menu right here. So I still have everything there exactly like I did when I went straight to the course. It just looks a little bit different because I've kept it within the guidelines instead of going to the full width and I can still access the module and the lessons. So there's my lesson, right? There's my files. There we go. There's my links. There we go. And if I go back to that page and edit, I can actually now we'll take it and go full width. So I'm click it again and we'll go general settings and full width just like that. I'm going to save it. We're going to take a look at how that looks different. So there we go, I saved it. And then we'll go here and refresh and refresh. There we go. And now it's full width, which means now I get that uh, full menu on the left-hand side. And I can scroll down, get a look at the entire page. I can go module, um, the lesson, there's the lesson right there. There's my files and my links. So you can see now I have the ability to embed this into a web page. And then I also have the ability once I embed it, to actually put it into a membership area. So there's a lot of things that we can do here to kind of manipulate what we have inside of Builderall to lock it down with the membership area or lock it down with user registration on the e-learning itself. Eventually we'll have the ability to connect it to checkout so they can go through checkout to release either the membership area or release the e-learning. So there's lots and lots of stuff that we can do, you guys. It's just a matter of kind of playing with it and seeing uh, what you want to do with it. Okay, Linda, go ahead. So if you were to put this inside like a restricted member area, can we not have like the uh, additional restrictions on the course? Because then it would it course for like a double opt-in or? Yeah, if you want to do, if you want to do the into a restricted area, then you want to set it up so that registration is not required. 
so that they can access the complete course and it's not required. Just remember that if you have registration not required, then there's other things that you can't do, like you can't have the final test and, and stuff like that. So you just have to kind of think about what you're doing and what it limits you to um, as far as the e-learning capabilities. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Uh, Will, go ahead. <laughs> I need to get Will the airplane thingies, right? <laughs> I think it's coming in the dark. You can't really see me. <laughs> I know. I'm holding my bell. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you go full width, how does that transfer over when you go to mobile? It's going to full width means it's going to look at the width, the amount of width that you have and uh, adjust based on the width. So for mobile, it should be completely responsive. All right. It is. It is. I believe it is great. Yeah, it is really good. I, I've looked at it on mobile and tablet, and I've been actually really, really excited that the e-learning is now mobile responsive. Okay. Very good. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions, you guys? Because Chip has a burning question, a burning, burning question, and that was, Chip, can you remind me what the question was? Because I've actually, it, it, I kind of leaned my head over today, and it drained out. Yep, I have uh, like 20 leads that seem to be connected to a funnel with someone else's affiliate ID, 114224. And I've just put that in the chat. So is that you, someone out there in, in, in watching today land? If so, let's get in touch and figure out what this is. It's not me, but um, let me see if I can grab an affiliate link. Here we go, Bill Roll. I'm gonna go, let me share my screen and I'll show you what I'm doing. Um, let's see, where are you guys at? Here we go, share my screen. And then I'll go incognito. And we'll go builderall.com. All right, so we'll make sure that's gonna pull up. Fabulous. And now I'm gonna go question mark, AID equals 114, 114.2.124, is that correct? Yes. All right. So we'll see what that does. So I'm going to start a free trial. And my name is Shelly. And my email is Shelly. Blah, 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 at overalltext.com. Copy that so I can log in. And then password is a secret 2020. And a secret 2020. And I accept and register. And let's see what it says. All right, it says upgrade now. I don't want to upgrade now. So I'm going to say no thank you. And then home and go to dashboard. There we go. And I'm in the United States. And now we'll look at account and sponsored by Builderall Official. So that looks like it's the Builderall Official account. So huh. I'm not real sure why that's popping up. Have you um, have you talked to support about it, Chip? No, not yet. Okay, so I would definitely just contact support about it and find out. Now, how's it showing up in your leads list, but it's got that number on it? Um, I don't know if I have that handy here. Is it in your lead list? Yes. Um, Need to, I must have some tab here that'll get me to the back office. Um, here we go. Affiliates, leads. And this is um, either get online free promotion or uh, what is EN Academy 365? Um, I don't know. Um, oh, I, I do know what that means. That is for the um, Brazilian uh, group. They actually okay. have a free English course. <laughs> okay. And, and uh, so when you join Builderall, you can get this training, that training, the other training, and you can get a free English course. Huh. Um, or affiliates.builderall.com. Yes, um, that means they're coming in through the affiliate uh, funnel. Yeah. Huh. I don't know. Um, I would take a screenshot, send it to you, uh, support and see if they can just take a look at it. Okay. All right. I was not any help except in just <laughs> clarifying that it was definitely overall. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Lisa, go ahead. 
if you already covered this in the beginning, just let me know because I came a little bit late. But if you have a course that is just free, but you want people to register for that, for the course, mm -hmm. does that integrate with Mailing Boss? Um, no, it doesn't integrate with Mailing Boss. You can do it as just free and uh, they have to register on uh, the e-learning to be able to get it free. Um, but uh, if you want, well, there's, there's a, a second way you can do it. So you can do an opt-in form and have that connected to Mailing Boss and then send them to e-learning and they don't have to register. They can just access the course for free. Or, 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 you can set it up so that it's a membership area and they um, register, right? They register for the membership area. That sets up up in Mailing Boss because you can connect it to Mailing Boss. But when they register it for the membership area, they get access to it for free, right? You register, you get access. Um, you integrate, you embed the uh, e-learning inside the membership area and Shazam, you're ready to go. So actually there's several ways to do it. Okay, my, my brain just went like that, so. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you want to try teaching it. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's really, um, there's a, a lot of different ways you can do it for sure, Lisa. So it just takes really playing with it. And honestly, the, the trick is to understand, okay, if I do this, this is happening. And if I do this, this is happening. And once you start getting a clear uh, clear picture of what, what is happening, right, you can start kind of melding them together to do these things that we just talked about. Okay. All right. Anything else, guys? I know Chris is like, you bored me out, Shelly. Um, go ahead, Carol. Yes, I, not a question, but a comment that I wanted to share with with everybody. Uh, I won't mention the name of the company, but um, my husband uh, tried to buy something through, through a guy, and it was a problem for the delivery, and it was supposed to be in the membership site, right? And actually, the uh, the actual platform is down for three weeks. Wow. Wow. There you go. So, uh, so actually, now he's, he's talking to them about, guess what? Builder, right? So. Wow. I know, I know that uh, I've been I've been with Bill Roll with Joada maybe two and a half years, and we've seen you know the the, the debut the ups and the downs of the ups. Okay, exactly, but uh, but I mean, I dreamt I dreamt about something like this, and Eric built it really, really. This is it. So yep. it took me two years, and I, I did the certification with with, with you, yep. Joada as well. But it took me two years to learn it all and create what what I call a web presence. Mm -hmm. So it's not just a website. We started with one website, and then we said, "Okay, we need to add that and that." Uh, I have now 16 websites all joined together, mm -hmm. and I'm ready to to go and talk to to people and to start uh, making money. <laughs> but uh, you know, so it was a, it was a very tiring experience for me because I I lost my mother. Meanwhile, I mean, you know, very tough. But in the end, um, uh, what is name? Eric said, "If you know how to use build all, all the tools." You're going to be able to have an idea and put it there. And you know what? This is exactly, exactly what is happening to us. So I'm very, very, very happy. And I know it's not perfect. There is some things, but really it's like small stuff. Small stuff. Right. You're exactly right, Carol. And I've, I've been with you for the two and a half years. I think I'm just a little bit older in Builderall than you are. And uh, so we've been there for quite some time now, watching it go from where it was a couple years ago to where it is now and knowing that it's going to be even better. And I can't even imagine what will be in two years, honestly. We've come so far. Um, but you've got the tools, you've got the ability to do amazing things. Um, if you have not hit that point where Kara's at, where you just kind of start coming up with ideas, um, all it's going to take is digging in and really trying to learn the system and learn one thing at a time. So if e-learning is your thing, plow into learning the e-learning. And then the excitement, you guys, is when you do have it, you can then stretch to those things that you didn't even think it could do there was just no way you thought it could ever do that and now between cheetah and e-learning and whatever else we can integrate into it wow all of a sudden now you can do things that other platforms can't do can't touch what builder all can do and you can look like you're a pro um so it's really really exciting what we have in our hands i'm i i am still not sure exactly what i did in my life to deserve something as good as builder all for sure but I, I count my lucky stars every single day um, because this platform is amazing, no doubt about it. Um, Chip, question, comment? Look. 
Hey, they designed a platform for you all. For you all. What you want, what you need, build a raw. Build a raw. Build it up. We just answering your call. Yeah. We're the one stop shop if your back's against the wall. Back's against the wall. Yeah. yeah, you're a builder raw rock star. Rock star. Hey, you can build it all. Go hard. Go hard. Sign up and you'll see we got it all. Yeah. We're the one stop shop if your back's against the wall. Against Look, the wall. If you're trying to build the name of your brand. Came with a plan, get your name in demand. Yeah. With Build a Raw, you can save your day in advance. Keep the apps automated so you barely need to glance. That's fact. Listen, think of all the power that you hold. hold. It's a new globe, everyone is grabbing for their phones. phones. Imagine the control, build your passion on your own. And the more that you connect, the more attraction they will show. Not Ooh. only a sales funnel, look, this is more advanced. Yeah. This will help you compete, but have the upper hand. Keep your products in demand. It's all in one spot, you don't have to calculate and feel afraid with your thoughts. Ooh. Automate your response. Dragon Drop your site or oh. click map your fans, see the pages they like uh -huh. or use the video rap or capture they sites. Design your own app from scratch, just how you like. Hey. Yeah, they designed a platform for you all. For you all. What you want, what you need, build a raw. Build a raw. Build it up. We just answering your call. Yeah. We're the one stop shop if your back's against the wall. Uh -huh. wall. Yeah. yeah, you're a builder raw rock star. Rock star. Hey, you can build it all. Go hard. Go hard. Sign up and you'll see we got it all. Uh -huh. We're the one stop shop if your back's against the wall. Design with y'all in mind. Let entrepreneurs shine. Tired of the nine to five, you starting your own grind and it's all right. They got the tools you need the connection they designed is truly unique never been able to express my views with ease i move release double click and do i'm pleased my clients as well tired of the hoops and leaps too many things in the way of my truth and dreams a builder all rock star is what you really are tune in on the internet will make you a star you don't need to study hard all it takes is a start work every day and move higher till you way off chart stay on never sleep on none of the apps it's a free sign up just so you know in advance builder Raws for the legends, nothing's holding you back. You got the tools and the plan, you Look, can stay on track. Believe hey, that they designed a platform for you all. For you all. What you want, what you need, build a raw. Build, build it up, we just answering your call. Yeah. We're the one stop shop if your back's against the wall. Against the wall. Yeah. Yeah. You're a builder raw rock star. Rock star. Hey, you can build it all, go hard. go hard. Sign up and you'll see we got it all. Yeah. We're the one stop shop if your back's against the wall.